Hello, I'm going to photograph this tree. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over that side there to sort of get this pine tree behind to get it to contrast to <laughs> I'm losing the plot because people are watching me. <laughs> <laughs> no, carry on, you're doing a great job. I'm not, I'm not, I've just lost the plot. <laughs> Cut! <laughs> I just Take thought you'd gone mad. <laughs> Do we need to help this poor man down? Well, probably. <laughs> Try again. Well, it's autumn now, so I thought I'd start like I normally do at me at my favourite tea shop while it's still open because it's very seasonal and go and look for some autumn colour. I thought it would be um, a bit um, well. It looked like it was a bit cloudy on the on the way down. It was a bit wet over the northern half of the lakes, but once you're over Dunmel Rays it's sort of cleared out so here in Grasmere it's a nice sunny day with a few fluffy white clouds so excellent opportunity to get uh, little patches of light on the landscape and uh, well we'll just see how it goes from now but until then I think I'll enjoy my cake Fortified by the tea and cake, I felt able to tackle the slight incline up to my first composition. And here we go again. Right. Um, got to photograph this nice yellow tree against this uh, this pine tree here. I don't know what it is. Might be redwood, somewhere else, some big cedar. Who knows? Um, but to get a nice clean edge, as I see on here, I'm going to move that way so we get this will increase because this is slightly behind. It'll increase how much. Uh, background this pine tree is to this major yellow tree so I'm gonna move over there as far as I can but there's a big drop so I don't know what's going to happen uh, so and just to balance out the composition so that's it here's a car coming cut I've just found another little problem see this tree here there it's just intersecting with this one so you're not getting a clean separation between both so I'm having to rethink, so what I think I'll do is I'll go back across the road and up this embankment and shoot with a slightly longer lens. This should look down, uh, diminish this little tree here and hopefully I can get a good separation on the edge. That's the plan. Right, I've got this problem here. There's a sapling there which is in the, the frame of the composition. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this uh, remote. Hopefully it'll work at this distance and go down and then trigger the camera remotely. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, the tree? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you want me to hold that one for you? 
No, no, it's all right. Are you sure? It's all right. I've, I've got a remote, you see. That's it. I can do it yeah, by remote. Probably, yeah. Right, here we go again. I'm going to do it again because just in case it was in the shop there. So I'll go back and check the uh, see what's on the camera. It's all right, I'm not in the shot. What I might do is I might go behind you up the bank and see if there's another shot with a longer lens. Because you know me, I like my long lenses. I'm a long lens Larry. So, turn that off and I'll just have a wander up. I won't take the camera because I think I'm experienced enough now to have an idea whether it's going to work or not. So I don't want to cart it all up to the top and then cart it back down again. Well, I've taken a landscape wide shot first, but uh, as you see, this shiny holly here is coming in, so I might have to try and kill the highlights and all that or dull it down a bit. And also, I probably won't see you here, but just out of a frame, there's a little twig coming in here in the sky. I'll have to clean that out or maybe crop it a bit further down than I would normally like. But that's how it goes. So I'll take it like this and then I'll do a portrait shot since I'm here. increasingly happening in this uh, turbulent world or well, cli climatic turbulent world a nice oak tree has gone down so I have to skirt around it I'm in the lower part of this wood uh, you may remember it from a, a previous autumn video where I've shot some fungus uh, But because I know it I think I don't think there are any really really bright sort of autumn color trees here Because um, it's mainly Oak and a few big pines and even uh, redwood trees. So I'm gonna I don't know what to do. I might head up up the hill to the edge of the wood because sometimes I think on the edges you get the put <laughs> the put trees which are a bit more what I call it colorful so it looks good from afar but this is sort of like an, a natural wood with a few uh, bits of um, interesting species sort of plonked in the middle he says not knowing what he's on about <laughs> well I had a different idea I've sort of wandered downhill into the middle of the wood off the paths and the clear area behind you which is sort of like uh, just brush and stuff I thought but it's let a bit more light in you see so I was hoping there'd be some shots over to the east but I don't think there is but this is looking promising you see because you've got a nice browny red uh, floor of beech leaves and oak well mainly, mainly beech and 
very little understory lots of mossy trunks and walls and things and roots sticking up and the lights coming from that side so it's sort of like it's at 90 degrees coming in so you get a nice contrast between one side of the tree trunks are, are bright and the other ones are in shade but it's soft shade so it's not really harsh so the contrast range isn't too too high which makes it look quite nice makes it look nice and tasty oh, no, I've got to say tasty there but I won't <laughs> so I think there's a tree down there if I can see I think it's that one there which has it stands out from the rest because it's got uh, patches of bright bark on it and uh, but the back the back side of it or the, the shade side is uh, or the north side is sort of like a lot of moss which is to make it sort of a, a brindle or mottled effect which looks more interesting so I'll go over there and see if I can make anything out of that also there's um an old wheelbarrow down here that's rusting in, into this wall which is interesting but it's not quite derelict or clean enough to warrant an artistic sort of fine art shot <laughs> see what I was going to do is you see this edge here I was first my first idea was to go over and then get this natural edge of the actual um side of the hill here but there's too many little branches sticking up and it looks a bit messy so I think what I'll do is I'll retreat back to this here and use that as a clean edge if I can uh, making sure that this sort of tapers down to it and then this tree is also clear so it's not being cut off by this little mound so that'll be the base of the shot use my head and my eyes and get the general level where the camera needs to be that's the highest I can go and that's the lowest I can go so it's about a good eight inches between them so I'll set the, the tripod up at that level and uh, then I can just use the centre column to bring it up a little bit or down to get it perfectly how I want so yeah that's probably the lowest right a bit lower for that right there Rather than fiddle about with the legs on the tripod, just use the centre column to come up and down. It's just easier that way. I know you shouldn't really do it, but, you know, I don't want to start faffing around with three different leg heights, trying to get it in the right position. That's one, one time and then the centre column is actually useful. <laughs> and not just a way of uh, making, your, <laughs> making your photograph soft. Right, I'll put the camera on, see what it looks like taken two shots and this bit here was really bothering me so I've taken it with it in and then I've zoomed in until it was hidden by you know it was out of frame but it does make the the base of this a bit tight so I might have to change my mind I think I might just take a wider shot in general as well and just crop it as a panoramic and see if that works out better this has killed me back this there's a few little items are sticking up I know you really shouldn't do this but I'm going to remove them or push them down this gives you an idea of how the white balance works in the camera see as I move away from the camera the blue top has less influence on the colour of the scene
it was just branches that are broken off during the storm so they haven't been there that long so they're not uh, part of the natural biome <laughs> right time to take a photograph now Sometimes when I've finished uh, a composition, what I like to do is go and have a look around, do a 360 and see what, what I can see from that particular point. So if we do this, we're going to make yourself, make you feel really sick. <laughs> I'm going down hill here. <laughs> Let's see if there's any uh, compositions. I feel a bit dizzy there myself. <laughs> so I'm going to have a look sort of uh, down there and see if I can find anything. I can't believe it. I'd walk right past it, right behind me. There's another composition. Um, there's this tree here. But what I've done is there was a log down here. I've just put some extra fresh leaves over it just to soften it a bit because it was just distracting in the corner of the frame. So... What I've done is I've sort of like, uh, that, yeah, where's it gone? That's the main character. That's the secondary character off towards the right hand side of the frame. That's correct. And yeah, basically that's it. <laughs> um, with the, um, the wall coming in. So the wall sort of like, oh, can I do this? Starts off here and it comes down and then goes back up here to the, so that leads you in from the main character down and up to the secondary character and out the picture. So you always read it left to right. But if you're in uh, Japan or Eastern countries, shoot to the composition the other way around because they read right to left. Uh, what I might do is I might go down the hill, down that way a bit and just to get a, a view a bit further up but i think the sky will probably um get in the way there'll be too much bright sky in the shot where here it's just uh really a little bit over here um but i'm here anyhow and it's just like another minute or so to shoot it so i'll just do that i won't vlog it because i can't be bothered <laughs> i'm just saving me battery for more interesting things later on. Well, I've packed my camera gear up, the tripods on the rucksack, and I just thought I'd sit in this little rock here and enjoy the peace and quiet you know it's a privilege to be here alone in this wood um, apart from you and then just have a think about all the problems I've got in the world that's enough let's go mm -hmm. 